Hello everyone, my name is Paulo Alves and on this video we are going to start the state management of the login screen for our real app using the Ionic framework and NGRX. We also create a service that soon will connect to our database and to our backend. So subscribe to the channel in case you want to follow this development and let's take a look on what we are going to have built by the end of the video. On this video we are going to work on the forgot email password functionality using Redux. We can see that in the beginning the state is empty and nothing is happening. If I put a valid email on the email field and I click on the forgot email password button, the state changes, so I'm recovering the password now. I show the loading component and the service that we built responds with success. So now the password is recovered and then I call the action to hide the loading component. If I restart this flow and I put an error email in my email field and I click on the forgot email password button, something similar happens with the state. I try to recover the password and I show the loading component. As the recover password fails, I have an error message. I hide the loading component and I show the error message. So let's go to the code. As our goal is to create the state management for the login page, we can go to the app store folder and create a new folder for the login state, which will be called login. Inside of this folder, we'll create a new file called loginState.ts that will represent the state of the login page. Here we can export an interface called loginState. So let's take a look at the login page and find out what states we need to manage. Here we need to know if the user is recovering the email or password and also if the user managed to recover the email or password. So let's create two properties on the login state. One will be the property is recovering password, which is a boolean, and the other one will be the property is recovered password, which is also a boolean. Also, we need to know if the user is trying to log in and if the user managed to log in. So let's create two more properties for this. Is logging in, which is a boolean, and is logged in, which is also a boolean. We also need to know if there was an error on any of those moments. So let's create an error property to manage that possibility. And that's all we need for now to manage the state of our login page. Now that we have created the representation of the login page state, let's add this representation to our other interface called app state, which actually represents our whole store. Now let's go to the next step and create the login page actions. Just to remind you, actions are instructions we are going to send to the store to let the store know how it should update itself. To do this, I will create a new file called login.actions.ts. This file will have all the actions of the login state. Let's start with the actions that are involved on the email password recovery. We will export a constant called recover password that will receive the create action function of ngrx. We will identify this action by the string recover password, and this action will receive no properties or no parameters to it. That's our first action, so let's think about of the flow of the login page. The user will click on the forgot email password button and will dispatch the action to the store. Based on this action, the login page will know the user is trying to recover its email password and will call a service to recover it. If that service is successful, then you have to update the state of the login page, informing the login page that the user managed to recover its email password. So this service will have to call a new action to update the store. Let's create then this new action. To do this, I will export a constant called recover password success that will receive the create action function of ngrx. We will identify this action by the string recover password success, and this action doesn't need to receive any properties as we are only interested in the success of the request, not on its response. Alright, now we need to do something similar in case there was an error on the recovery of the email password. When there is an error, the service will have to call an action to update the store with that error. So let's create this new action. I'll export a constant called recover password fail that will receive the create action function of ngrx. We will identify this action by the string recover password fail and this action receives as property the error. So this is how we declare that an action has properties. All right, now only the actions related to the login are missing. But let's first take care of the forgot email password part of the login page and then we'll come back to the login itself. The next step is to create the reducers for the login page. 
The reducers are responsible for receiving the action dispatched, identifying them, and returning to the store the new state. Let's create a new file called login.reducers.ts. Inside of it, we'll create a constant called initial state, which is of the type login state, and will be initialized with all its properties equal to no or false. Now we'll create a constant called reducer that will receive the create reducer function of NGRX. Our reducer will receive the initial state we just defined and we'll have a list of actions that the reducer will be able to work on top of them. So on the recover password action, we'll execute a function that has as its parameter the current state and this function will return the new state. For now, let's just return the current state. Let's do something similar to the success and fail action. So I'll just copy and paste and change the names of the actions. Now I'll export a function called login reducer, which receives a state of the type login state and an action. This function returns the reducer that we just defined and passes to it the state and the action. Now let's add this login reducer to our store so the store knows it exists. We go to the appstoremodule.ts file and can add a new entry with the login reducer. All right, now our store has the login state. Let's now create some tests to manage the changes we make on top of those actions. I'll create a file called login.store.spec.ts. This file will describe the login store tests. Let's start by creating a test for the recover password action. I will start with a failing test, so I will expect that true is false. So let's now run our tests. I'll create a new command line and tell npm to execute the tests. Now we have a failing test and can actually start programming. What I need to do here is, based on the initial state, when I send the recover password action to the reducer, the reducer will answer with a new state that has the is recovering password property equal to true. So I will declare a constant called initial state, which is of the type login state and has all the properties configured as null and false. Now I can create a constant called new state, which will receive the response of the login reducer that receives as parameters the initial state I just created and the recover password action. Then I'll expect that the new state is equal to the initial state plus the error as null, the is recovered password as false, and the is recovering password as true. When I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything inside of the reducer, so let's make it pass. To do this, I can go to the reducer and on the recover password action, I will return the new state plus the error as null, the is recovered password is false, and the is recovering password as true. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's create a new test for the success case. I'll just copy and paste the previous test, change its name to recover password success, change the initial state property is recovering password to true, and change the action to recover password success. Now I have to expect that the new state is equal to the initial state plus the error as null, the is recovering password as false, and the is recovered password as true. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything on the reducer for the recover password success action. So let's make it pass. To do this, I can return the current state plus the is recovering password equal to false, is recovered password equal to true, and the error equal to null. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's create a new test for the fail case. I'll just copy and paste the previous test, change its name to recover password fail. The initial state keeps being the same. Change the action to recover password fail. Now I need an error parameter, so I'll create a new constant called error, which will just be an object with some error property. Now I have to expect that the new state will be the initial state plus the error, the is recovering password property as false, and the is recovered password property as false. After I save it, our test will fail. It fails because the reducer is just returning the current state. So let's return a new state that's based on the initial state plus the is recovered password as false and the is recovering password as false. Now just the error is missing here. 
Notice on the test file that together with the action, I'm sending the error as parameter. To get access to that parameter, we can add to the reducer function another parameter called action. This action, as you can see when I hover the mouse, is an object that has the error that is the parameter of the action. So we can just set as the error the parameter of that action. After I save this, our test will pass. All right, our state actions and reducers for the first part of the logging page are created. Let's just make them a bit better. Imagine that in the future I need to add another property to the login state, like the user, for example. Notice that now our code is broken and I need to make changes on four parts of it to make it work again. And that's pretty bad. One way you can make it better is to create a new file called appinitialState.ts. This file will contain the initial state of our store. So I will export a constant called app initial state, which is of the type app state. And now I can define the whole store initial state here. So the loading state will have the show property as false and the logging state will have the error as no and the other properties as false. Now I can just come to the errors and instead of defining the initial state every time, I can just get it from the file we just created. Now if I come to the logging state and, for example, add a new property, we only have to change the code in one place, the app initial state. So let's remove these properties as we don't actually need them and let's focus on the app. So now let me close all the files and let's implement the state management for the email password recovery for the logging page. First, I need access to the store, so let's get it on the constructor. 